Okay, sorry, that was even shorter than the shortest one minute we've had. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but to lighten things up, we have Brendan. Hello, PurpleCon. I'm really excited to be here. Uh, my name is Brendan. I'm an SRE site reliability engineer, not to be confused with software versus engineering with Gidra, uh, and part-time red teamer with Atlassian. I just completed a rotation on the red team. And I'm here today to talk to you about phishing, uh, some of the tactics that a red team would use, or, or a, an attacker that's very uh, convinced that they want to get your data specifically. Um, so yeah, let's jump into it. So the first thing is, the most important tool that an attacker has is their, is their ability to find out information, their ability to do recon. So give me five days to hack the Gibson, and I'm going to spend the first four doing recon. So when most people have heard that I went on a red team rotation, what they think of is, say, InMap, Kali, um, these advanced tools, when actually what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using uh, Google and <laughs> uh, Facebook and Instagram. I'm going to a LinkedIn page to get uh, maybe your uh, careers and your technologies that you use, that you list, um, just kind of generally publicly available information. And so this gives a lot of ammo for attackers to perform phishing attacks. And so as an example of that, um, if I go on Instagram and I search for Atlassian, which is where I work, um, I'll see this. <laughs> and so you might notice, uh, that, well, what I notice from this picture is I see a lot of Macs and I see a Slack sticker. And so um, if I'm jumping to conclusions, which I will for a short version of this talk, I'll assume that everyone at Atlassian uses Macs. And so I'm going to have to test anything that I do against, say, Safari um, on a Mac and Maybe I want to target Slack. So that's what, I, that's what I'm going to use as the basis for this attack. So let's say that uh, I was doing this against PurpleCon. I might develop something like this. So hi, PurpleCon. We at Slack share your love of all things purple. We couldn't wait to share the latest purple update with you that has a purple sidebar and a, and a, uh, a lot of soothing notification sounds. Um, and you know, click here to join our beta and get this really awesome purple version of Slack. So this is really cool, and it might work if we, uh, if we uh, take our audience that scientifically loves purple into account. <laughs> um, so some, some of you that are, that are really um, looking at the details here might notice, oh, OK, this is not actually from Slack. It's from slackpurplecon.com. Uh, I didn't register this domain, so feel free to have lots of fun with that later. <laughs> um, but this is one of the things that you're, that you're looking at. And so, wow, this is, this is pretty scary because attackers have lots of time to do this recon, and they can send out uh, 10 of these campaigns if they want to. How do we defend against that? Um, and I think that's very important for a talk that, or for a conference that's focused on defense. So some of the first things that we'll reach for is on our technical side, uh, two-factor authentication. So in this case, I was trying to install malware. In other cases, you might try to be stealing credentials and two-factor authentication makes it much more difficult to steal those credentials because, uh, especially if you're using like a hardware-based token, uh, it makes it very tough to steal those credentials, and the attacker is going to have to put in a lot more work to, to get those. So that's one of the first and most valuable tools. If you don't have this, I highly suggest doing that. Next thing is setting up some sort of endpoint monitoring so that you get data about your endpoints into a central system, and you can do some sort of like detections and anomalies. Um, at Atlassian, we use OS query. I, before doing the red team rotation, I was on the security SRE team. So I know a lot about OS query. Find me after the talk to learn a lot more about that. But any sort of endpoint monitoring is going to be your friend here. And the last thing is not technical, but it's about culture. So this is something that I feel really strongly about, is having a strong security culture where every employee feels like they're part of the security team. This takes a lot of time to do. It takes a lot of empathy. But I think it's extremely important. And so when somebody comes up to you and um, they, they, they say, hey, I just clicked on this link in this email, uh, or I, I clicked on this link and I sent my password to this, or I ran this program, um, some of you might be tempted to get angry or to punish them. Um, but I say that employee is very brave and we shouldn't think poorly of social engineering targets in the same way that we don't think poorly of people who get caught in the rain without an umbrella. 
So what I, what I want to highly emphasize here is that cultural aspect, being positive can get you a lot further than blaming someone. So when someone comes up to you and they say that, you should say, oh, wow, and, and maybe if you have a system in place to send rewards, like at last year we have kudos. A lot of companies have a similar thing where you can send them rewards. Um, do that instead of punishing them. Um, I hope this has give, given you kind of an overview of some of the tools that, are, that an attacker might use to attack and some of the things that, they, that you can do to defend. Um, if you'd like to find more, come find me after the talk um, or hit me up on Twitter. I don't usually use it, but I will be available if you'd like to find me there. <laughs> <laughs>